Russia claims to have completely taken the eastern Ukrainian city of Bakhmut, but Kyiv is disputing that claim. As the fighting shows no signs of stopping, President Volodymyr Zelensky met with President Biden and other world leaders over the weekend at the G7 summit in Japan, which ended with a joint statement backing Ukraine. CBS News foreign correspondent Deborah Pata is in Kyiv with the latest. President Zelensky has lobbied long and hard for advanced fighter jets. Now, after a sudden about turn in U.S. policy, Washington has agreed to let Western allies supply Kyiv with American-made F-16 jets and will support a joint effort to train Ukrainian fighter pilots on them. Ever the master of powerful symbols, Zelensky used his visit to Hiroshima, which was obliterated by a World War II atomic bomb, to draw comparisons to the devastated city of Bakhmut. There is absolutely nothing left alive. All the buildings are destroyed, he said. It is simply absolute, total destruction. Zelensky was quick to deny Kremlin claims that Bakhmut had been taken by its forces, but peering through the dense fog of war makes it hard to determine if the fighting in one of the longest and bloodiest battles in this conflict really has come to an end. Russian mercenaries from the Wagner Group stake their claim to the city, and the leader of the paramilitary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, posted this video. Bragging that his private army had taken control of every inch. And while the Ukrainian armed forces admitted losing ground, they said they still controlled areas southwest of the city and were advancing around its flanks. Ukraine's rallying cry has for so long been Bakhmut holds, but this past week, Bakhmut has been burning. That battle has lasted over nine months, during which Bakhmut has become a symbol of fierce Ukrainian resistance. But the focus on the city could quickly shift once that much talked about counteroffensive gets underway. Vlad and Marie? Keith, thank you, Deborah. I want to bring in James uh, Landale. He's uh, working with, the part with our partners at the BBC to talk a little bit more about the latest uh, from Ukraine. Listen, both sides have lost significantly in this battle for Bakhmut. At this point, it's difficult to determine what is going on there on the ground. Uh, it's not strategically that important. Tell me that this is more than symbolic because there have been so many lives lost at this point. Well, yes, it's more than symbolic because of the number of lives that have been lost. Uh, Russia has chosen to uh, apply an awful lot of resources to seizing this city. It spent eight months trying to do it. Uh, and it's an awful lot of men have died in the process. Tens of thousands of Russian soldiers have died. Many more have been injured. Even more have been diverted from other, other parts of the front line. And that's the point. That is why Ukraine has defended this so hard. Not just because it became a sort of symbol symbolic act of resilience against the Russian invasion. It is also a Russian killing battle. Even the, one of the other generals on the Russian side described Bakhmut as a meat grinder because so many Russians have died. So in other words, although lots of Ukrainian men have, and women have died there too, a much larger proportion of Russians have died and, Russia, and the Ukraine has fought to do that, to diminish and weaken Russia's war machine. Okay, let us talk about this long-awaited spring offensive. Uh, um, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky said that, listen, they're ready to go, but they need the military aid. Now Washington has agreed to send American-made F-16 fighter jets. Could this be what Ukrainian forces need to launch this counteroffensive? And has there been a response from Russia? No, the two things are separate. Uh, the, the promise of F-16s, the training and the eventual delivery of F-16 weapon, um, uh, aircraft, which are American made, but they will mostly come from European nations, that's going to take some months. Uh, the offensive, the counteroffensive, if it does take place, will happen most likely before that. So what the, the delivery and the, the promise of these F-16s will do is it will not just beef up uh, Ukraine's air force in the long run, but it will also be a, a physical demonstration of the 
uh, res resolve and commitment of the United States and its European allies to support Ukraine militarily in the long run. So in other words, in the, in, in the medium term, it will have a practical effect. In the long term, it has a symbolic diplomatic effect. Mm. James Landale, thank you so much.